Hello, Bobby, aka Anarchimedia here. And in this video, I am going to be doing something I do quite often, which is taking on the gatekeepers of YouTube media analysis. However, this time I will be doing it a wee bit more ambitiously and personally than usual. Because this time, once again, people, I, as a Star Wars fan, am going to be defending a Star Wars property from the rest of the Star Wars fandom. Yes. The day has arrived. The day that I will be defending Ryan Johnson's Star Wars The Last Jedi. As such, I will be, um, entitling this video, Star Wars The Last Jedi, Deconstructing a Legend. Now, what is a legend? A legend is a narrative that contains bits and pieces of truth that over time get lost um, and um, and filled in with uh, other um, other interpretations with the benefit of hindsight. That is what a legend is. As such, um, a legend is not quite a lie or a myth, however, it contains the seeds for lies and myths. Why is this crucial to understand? Well, Quite simply, it provides Ryan Johnson's motivation for deconstructing the legend of Luke Skywalker. And let us not forget who is Luke Skywalker and what was his appeal as a protagonist um, in the 70s. Luke Skywalker, unlike his father, was not, in fact, a prophesied chosen one. People forget this. And, and this not only makes him distinct from his father, but it also makes him distinct from his Dune influence, Paul Madib, Atreides. Mm -hmm. 
Luke was a simple farm boy on Tatooine. He was a humble moisture farmer with big dreams and high hopes. He um he had dreams of of fighting against the empire but he never believed that he would ever get that chance. And so when he happened upon upon R2-D2 and C-3PO, it seemed like a stroke of dumb luck to him when he happened upon old Ben Kenobi, whom we now know to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, as an old man. Um, in, it was also seemingly just this. And um, for those who bring up Obi-Wan's line about there's no such thing as, as luck, in Star Wars, lines are rarely meant to be literal, you nerds. Furthermore, Luke was a, a whiny teenager when he was introduced. Why is this important to remember? Because it gives him a gives him and the audience a context for how does Lucas's Luke go to become Irvin Kirshner's Luke, Richard Marquand's Luke, and finally, yes. Ryan Johnson's Luke. Now, another element of deconstructing the legend of Luke Skywalker lies, of course, quite naturally in the decanonization of the legend's continuity, which, whilst sequel trilogy haters would love to blame Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, and Johnson purely for this, the fact is the process of decanonization of the EU was a process that was begun by Lucasfilm long before Disney ever bought the rides. Um, if you read the Clone Wars multimedia project, um, you can clearly see that the little bit we see of the Clone Wars in the films, what we see in the video games, what we see in the 2D micro series, and the later 3D full-length animated series 
and the and not to mention the comics and novels frequently contradict each other quite heavily. Um and the origins and fate of Darth Maul uh, was also quite inconsistent between the cartoons, the comics, the video games. Of course, to be fair, the canonicity of, of much of that material was questionable to begin with. by design. <laughs> so, how do we get from Farm Boy Luke to, um, to Vader fighting Luke to Vader defeating Jedi Knight Luke to disenchanted, um, fed up with it all Hermit Luke. If you, if you look purely at the films themselves and ignore all the supplemental material and lore that has built up over the years, which is what Disney and Ryan Johnson, from a marketing point of view, very wisely chose to do. It's not hard to figure out. It's not rocket science. Luke has always been a person who has had high hopes. He has always been a person who has been very firmly entrenched in his ideals and his perspectives, which has often set him at odds with higher authority, whether that of the Empire, whether that of his aunt and uncle, whether that of Obi-Wan, whether that of Yoda, whether that of the Jedi code in general. Much like his father before for him and much like myself, Luke is an INFPT. And this means that that Luke is a very humble person, he is a very friendly person, he is a very imaginative, open-minded person, he is a very good-hearted person, but he is also an extremely vulnerable person. And what do we know about the Force Orders, whether, whether Jedi, Sith, or Knights of Ren. They all, to some extent or another, shun human vulnerability. And this led to their destruction. Because when you force a human being to go against their own natures, however good the intention may be,
and however lofty the justification, there is going to be volatility and resentment that builds as a result of that. This, this volatility, this resentment manifested in Anakin in one way. It manifested in Kylo in a very similar way. And it manifested in Anakin's son, Luke, in a different way. In... In combing through the the Jedi text and and Jedi holocrons, Luke sought to understand why it is so many Jedi turned to the dark side, and ultimately the conclusion he came to was that was that the reason was not as the Jedi themselves believed because of the learners inability to properly repress their emotions but rather because the Jedi code itself was a recipe for failure its message when you really think about it when as Luke put it you strip away the myth. The Jedi's legacy was one of failure. Darth Sidious rose because the Jedi Code was essentially self-destructive and destructive of humanity on an existential level. The Sith and the Knights of Ren understood in this context are not merely a perversion of the Jedi as they like to claim. It is rather a natural consequence of the Force trying to balance itself against such anti-human dogmatism as the Jedi had. This has been Bobby, a.k.a. Anarcha Media. Liberty, equality, fraternity, goodbye.